Hi everyone. Today we have with us Dr. Shushmita Pati, who will be talking to us about her new book, Properties of Rent, Community, Capital, and Politics in Globalizing Delhi. Shushmita Pati is an assistant professor of political science at the National Law School of India University, Bangalore. She studied political science at Delhi University and at Jawaharlal Nehru University. She's interested in studying the interactions of urban politics and political economy. And her recent book uh, has uh, Properties of Rent, Community Capital and Politics in Globalizing Delhi has uh, been published by the Cambridge University Press. So uh, welcome, Shushmita. Very happy to have you here with us today. You know, just to... Uh, it's entirely my pleasure and congratulations for doing such a great work with sociology. It's, it's becoming a wonderful, wonderful resource. Thank you so much. Now, just to start off the conversation, uh, just uh, could you uh, talk a little bit about the context in which you wrote this book? Uh, so this book uh, largely emerged as my PhD thesis. Uh, uh, before that, for my MPhil, I was more interested in the politics of public history. Uh, but for my PhD, I wanted to focus more on political economy and I was uh, thinking about, okay, and like all PhD students, I think I was also equally, uh, I was fumbling around, okay, what, what could be the, my next project? But then, uh, so it was my supervisor who suggested, why don't you look at these urban villages? We know so little about it. And by now we have some literature around these spaces, but at that time there was literally nothing. So I was like, yeah, maybe this could be an interesting site because it's an interesting interface between uh, a village, which is situated right in the middle of a city, and uh, what is the question of political economy uh, from agrarian to urban? Uh, what, how does this shape up? So um, that's that. With the so with that uh, intention, I went into uh, uh, studying uh, these villages mostly to understand how caste and kinship relations work into uh, uh, urban capital. So that was my initial question. But then as I researched more, I think the question also got more and more uh, uh, complicated and nuanced. So that's the uh, context in which the, uh, the book uh, was actually written. So, and I submitted in 2017. So I also took a while before I finalized my thesis into, into a book. Right. We are uh, primarily sociologists and I have to ask, you know, uh, you to talk a little bit about the context of you as the field worker, the researcher, as well as the methods that have been primarily used in the book. Uh, so, uh, as you know, as in I've always been trained as a political scientist, I haven't been trained as a, as a, a sociologist or an anthropologist, but uh, given uh, uh, my training in, in, in JNU, I think I was always uh, uh, very keen on uh, doing courses from outside uh, Center for Political Studies. So I used to take a lot of courses in history, in, in sociology, in arts and aesthetics. So, by the time as in it came came on to uh, uh, doing my own research, um, I automatically gravitated towards a more ethnographic mode of, of uh, uh, doing research. But it was all mostly uh, self-taught by reading a lot of ethnography around. Uh, so that's how I uh, uh, figured out, okay, how does one do uh, ethnography really, which is different from say field work as such. Um, so yeah, so, um, but so I, I really hope that the book is also doing justice to all these disciplines that I uh, borrow from quite a bit in, uh, uh, in, in the book. So um, the field, I think for anyone is a hard place to negotiate. It's, uh, but for me, it was a little uh, different because the field was so close. So uh, like I also, uh, just give me a sec, uh, like I also talk in the, uh, talk about, Okay. I think we'll have to cut that out. Anyway, so, uh, so yeah, like I was saying that um, as in field work is always a challenge for everyone. It's not easy for anyone. Um, I had a strange problem given that my field was so close to the place where I where I live, which is which is JNU, right? And one of the villages that I look at is right opposite JNU's main gate. Right? So that was one of my primary fields. So uh, 
in many ways i was not a stranger to to that to that place because uh, those villagers because they rent out a lot of these uh, rent out their property to many jnu students um, they are constantly uh, 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 interacting with students in and out so they have a sense of what a jnu student is like so there in in fact um, this many ethnographic theories would tell you that the moment uh, the uh, the field worker goes into the field the field doesn't remain the same the field worker changes the the space but here in in my case because this what is a field and what is my own space was so uh, intertwined in many ways that uh, their their presence in in say uh, my life would also be uh, equally say uh, 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 would equally frame the way in which i was doing field work so for example when the whole the 2016 uh, 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 the jnu uh, controversy cropped up and it was jnu was suddenly on national tvs and such uh, and people were protesting outside jnu gates at, uh, and the gates had to be shut um, i could see some of my respondents who were outside the gate were protesting against jnu students being anti national uh, and and those are the moments when you see okay what uh, it's it it became a far more it uh, complicated story of okay uh, 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 how does one do uh, this field work right so Uh, so yeah, so it 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 uh, uh, it wasn't. It's never a one way process. In my case, uh, it was differently not a one way process because of all these uh, uh, questions of proximity, right? And the questions of that I was not an unfamiliar figure at all. They the moment I entered the village, they had me figured out uh, who, what kind of person I could be, uh, whether I smoke or not smoke, uh, uh, what kind of a person I am. So they had they had opinions and ideas about. everything right so yeah right so, so uh, thing, sorry just, uh, one thing yeah. i forgot to mention was also uh, the question of gender so this is why uh, for many field workers i think uh, especially women field workers it becomes very easy to uh, say access women automatically right so the, for me it became increasingly hard for these very reasons right so i could easily say uh, meet meet with men uh, but to meet with another woman who is my age or slightly younger uh, became absolutely impossible so even in despite the fact that i spent a considerable amount of time doing field work uh, my access to younger women was uh, uh, quite quite uh, difficult hmm so your book is titled properties of rent Uh, how do you use the term rent to understand real estate and property in delhi as well as you know uh, your comments on the role that land acquisition played in transforming rural to urban property so uh, so let me just give you the back drop of of uh, what these urban villages are especially also for the uh, people who are listening in um um so when delhi was uh, expanding post 1950 so this is one of those big uh, uh, land acquisition projects especially after uh, india's independence after uh, partition has taken place you have a whole lot of refugee uh, influx uh, delhi is uh, now the capital of 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 the of, of india you need uh, government buildings you need uh, uh, residence complexes so um, so in order to create what is in a way new new delhi uh, which we today understand as uh, south delhi much of so much of the south delhi was constructed post 1950s um and for this reason the government needed a lot of land uh so massive lands were acquired post 1950s and and this is all from the on the southern fringe of what was delhi's periphery at that time which probably ended at karol bag right um so here uh, massive land acquisition starts to take place and most of them happen to be either jhat or gujjar villages on the southern uh, periphery um and interestingly um uh, the uh, the government while it was uh, uh, for this acquisition policy uh it did not entirely displace the villagers so till now the familiar story of this uh, uh, of uh, 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 displacement or land acquisition is that of displacement right people get displaced from their erstwhile places so here they're not entirely displaced they're 
agricultural land is taken away, whereas the residential land is retained, right? So the villagers could continue to live on their residential land, but had to let go of their agricultural land for a uh, compensation money, right? So which is where this idea of Laldora actually comes in, right? Because Laldora is technically that, that line on the map Right on the revenue records map, which um, uh, which was the line between, say, the village land as uh, uh, from the agri agricultural land. So this Lal Dora land, which is uh, uh, which is a non-revenue land, it gets uh, 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 retained, and it, people are not displaced. So what we see in so what you see is basically um, in twenty years, uh, these villagers who are agrarians or you know pastoralists suddenly find themselves in the middle of a fast growing city with no land of their own right? so you see these people uh, hustling in order to figure out okay uh, new figure out new ways of livelihood right which is which cannot be agriculture anymore so that's the story uh, uh, of these urban villages and uh, that's a story i trace from 1950s onwards uh, so in many villages, what you see is that because urban infrastructure is coming in really fast, say if a road gets built, right, uh, immediately these villages begin, to, at least on the peripheries, begin to get uh, commercialized, right, because that's the uh, part of the village which is directly facing the city, right. Uh, but what happens is the insides of the village, the actual abadi, the, the residential part of the village, continues to look pretty much like a village. So you have cattle and, uh, you know, uh, 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 these big uh, 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 um, community uh, spaces, uh, older kinds of community spaces, uh, which continue to exist. These Haveli-like structures, they continue to exist uh, way into 70s and 80s even, sometimes even up to 90s. But what happens by 1990s is something radically uh, different. Right, uh, which is when economy gets liberalized and Delhi is becoming a service uh, 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 industry oriented city, no longer a manufacturing city. So as a result, what happens, a new class of migrants begin to come in town, uh, which is uh, people who are looking for uh, blue collar jobs, people who are looking to work in these uh, new malls in, in say, the, the, uh, the hundreds of restaurants and spas and uh, students like us, right, who came to the city uh, uh, looking for opportunities. So they all needed spaces to live somewhere uh, uh, which is uh, 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 feasible, which is affordable. Uh, so what happens is that these villages then see an opportunity where they begin to reconstruct their old houses to then create a small, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's say uh, almost cheap copies of uh, a flat arrangement, right? But not as, of course, not as spacious, not as uh, 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 well built. So these are poorly constructed, badly ventilated one room apartments that come up. Right. So people. So it's only in 90 post 1990s onwards and begin when people actually begin to break down their houses and begin to construct these uh, uh, one room apartments. In some other villages, what happened was um, uh, there were some government manufacturer uh, garment artisans who were already living in. So this is the story of Shafujat that I look at. Um, and uh, by 2000s, what happens is that some fashion designers discover this place and they, they figure out, okay, so this is a, my workers are already here. And this seems like a place which can be curated into this quaint uh, uh, sort of a curated uh, uh, space where you know my clientele would love to come. So that's the story of Hoskha's village and uh, Shapujar. So uh, a lot of fashion designers start coming in and they start building, the, uh, bringing their boutiques in. Okay? So uh, that's the uh, that's the way in which uh, these at least these two villages develop. But the broader story of urban villages also is that uh, almost every village begins to have a certain kind of specialization uh, in terms of rental property. So if you know my Palpur, my Palpur, which is very close to the airport, they have uh, uh, lots of hotels, right? So that's the kind of property that they specialize in. If you are in Yusuf Sarai, which is very close to Ames, they have property for 
long term uh, 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 furnished apartments for people who are uh, coming for uh, uh, long term treatments right at aims and need again a cheap space but they don't want to put in too much money in terms of investing uh, with uh, appliances and things so uh, so those kinds of uh, arrangements they have come up with so um, there's a place in, in closer to gurgaon called ghetorni they specialize only in godowns right so so they rent out to bigger uh, 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 companies for for storage so you see how differently they have man they maneuvered around the needs of the city and and uh, and and uh, 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 urban capital so to speak uh, i hope i answered answered your question um, around I'm, i hope i'm not missing anything no no not at all yeah went on a long tirade Oh, uh, I mean, that's very interesting how the urban villages in Delhi have come up. And I think, uh, as you were mentioning, how most of them are centered around some aspect of the market or the economy. So, you know, uh, from there, I'd like to talk, uh, you know, would want you to talk about the real estate market in Delhi, particularly in the context of Dalits entering the equation. So, I mean, uh, um, the market. So do you think it changes uh, the different uh, equations within the real estate markets with the dalits coming into the picture uh, right i think i missed uh, so that's what i i think i was missing i missed the rent part of your of the question that you had asked maybe this uh, would time better with uh, so maybe let me just start with the rent question so uh, so while i was looking at all these uh, uh, different kinds of uh, formations what um, became important for me to understand is the nature of how caste works in terms of uh, uh, creating a certain kind of understanding around property right and here we are looking at least i was looking at um, uh, two uh, uh, caste uh, uh, two villages which are dominated by the jats now uh, jats have an interesting historical association with land per se right so by the british government had uh, declared them as an agrarian caste and ac uh, according to the punjab land alienation land alienation act 1900 um, you couldn't sell land to anyone who's not from the agrarian caste so as a result what happened was that uh, in the northwest part of india um, the jats ended up uh, uh, owning quite a significant amount of land right in delhi itself almost 48% of land uh, uh, belongs uh, to the jat community so as a result what happens and this is precise the land which from agrarian is very very quickly transitioning into into real estate right so um, and what i also trace is this notion of uh, 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 bhai char right so this northwestern part of india had uh, a very different form of land in your system in the colonial times called the bhaichara uh, form of land so this is very different from the zamindari system so in bhaichara what happens there some understanding of collective ownership of property right uh, or lands so i won't go into the details as much but what happens is that this though as an agrarian land disappears but their way of uh, uh, holding on to land or to property or doing business still remains collective in many ways right so they continue that notion that social meaning of bhaichara quite into uh, uh, the post colonial times till today right so you would see how brothers and uh, 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 and family members would invest in land together right you would see uh, ways in which uh, uh, um, uh, uh, there is a general sense of um, Uh, despite economic disparity of course there are rich people and there are poor people there is a sense of uh, egalitarianism within amongst the jats for each other right so that all of that is transitioning from uh, the the older system i am saying this is precisely this kind of a a, a, a historical uh, 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 sociability which then becomes absolutely crucial in the urban context right because uh and it also becomes then a question of honor it begin becomes a question of uh, respectability it becomes a question also of um let's say the opposition to the city 
So what I'm talking about in the book is also like on one hand, the city is opportunity for them. The fact that the agrarian lands transform into real estate uh, is, uh, uh, is hugely profitable in many ways. But at the same time, the city is, not, uh, is, not, is also seen with certain kind of suspicion because it's also seen as a, a, a corrupting force. It's also seen as a force that will uh, take away their own ways of living and their own ways of life. So which is why this, uh, uh, for them, this collectivity is very, very important. And that's uh, something that they very, uh, 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 they're very close, they, they, they closely guard against the city, against, uh, 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 say, uh, uh, even capital. So that's the distinction that I'm drawing between capital and rent. So if you open up to capital too much, uh, capital has a strange uh, way of, uh, uh, in a way, effacing ownerships, right? Because capital is mostly about, uh, you know, quick buying and selling. Capital is quickly a, is about uh, 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 making profits when you see there is an opportunity, right? It's not so much about uh, uh, belongingness and finding a closely knit uh, system. But rent, on the other hand, which is about owning a resource together, right? Uh, in the case of OPEC, you see it happening in terms of oil, right? How oil gets guarded as a commodity by like a few countries. But uh, in, a, in a very different way, it happens similarly because you own these resource of rental properties together, right? And uh, that's what is something uh, you will have to closely guard in order to uh, 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 make sure that uh, 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 this is, this remains uncorrupted. But at the same time, you know, this is what creates the racial tension. This is also something that creates the tension with capital uh, because they do not always want to, uh, much of the transaction in these villages happen in hard cash. And they happen in hard cash precisely for the, this reason. Because the moment you capital becomes fictitious, it becomes hard to pin down who it belongs to. It becomes very easy to, to, to like transfer from one to another. And that's the precise point of finance. Uh, capital, right? Uh, but when it comes to hard cash, it's it's absolutely uh, 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 um, it, it it becomes even more important to and, and and easier to hold it down to like in in a very close community, right? So that's how money usually travels in these places. So um, so that's what I talk about. So I'm saying this rent frames itself and and finds itself uh, in these spaces as a way of, uh, yes, it's a part of capitalism and I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's not that, but at the same time, it's, it also has these uh, 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 frictions with capital and doesn't quite want to become one. So which is why rent for me is a very important category. It's a way of, uh, uh, of course, and rent, the way in which we colloquially use it, it's a way of renting property and that is the dominant business, so that's one. The second way of looking at rent is also as a political economic category, that rent is actually an expression of collectively owning a resource together and how it works differently from capital. And the third aspect of it is social and cultural, that this ownership, it's not devoid of uh, a sense of emotion, a sense of honor, a sense of um, uh, insecurity, a sense of defiance. So it, it has all of these uh, uh, elements in, in the nature in which rent shapes up in, 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 in these villages. So, uh, yeah, so now coming back to the question of uh, the Dalits. Um, so what happens is that, so like I was saying that it, the, the village lands, uh, the Abadi, the Lal Dora lands, they become uh, uh, commercially viable, they become real estate post 1990s, right? When uh, people are looking for cheap places to live in and so on and so forth. So uh, what happens is that suddenly the Dalits of the village who were hitherto landless, right? Uh, who had no role to play in land acquisition, so to speak. They suddenly find themselves to be landlords because at least they have that little plot of land within the village, which belongs to them, 
right? Which which they can say legitimately lay claims over, right? So this is also a time when a lot of post 1990s you see a lot of land grab happening, because much of this own uh, because it was never revenue land. These the village abadi land was never quite broken up into ownership. So it was only communally understood that okay this this land belongs to that person and this uh, portion is this this family's and all. But it was all socially understood. But the moment this land begins to have value all these understandings collapse. So massive amounts of land grab happens. And of course, the more powerful you are, the more land you would grab. So that of course happened. But despite that, uh, the jat of community in the village uh, is able to uh, 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 um, get hold of some property, some land are able to establish ownership of that. So as a result, what happens is, of course, they own much less property than their jat counterparts, but still collectively, they become an important uh, uh, set of landholders. So what I'm, I'm in, in one of my chapters, I'm describing something called the cartel, that how the, the land market uh, uh, really uh, behaves like a cartel because you are controlling a resource together. So you better figure out how you, uh, what kind of going rates would there be, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you, uh, uh, there is some understanding through which say rents are decided on and hikes, uh, how would say prices go up or not go up? Those uh, issues are decided on. So then it's, if, if they are a significant uh, bunch of landowners, then it becomes absolutely uh, crucial for the jart landlords to also uh, grudgingly, but give them entry. So that's precisely what happens. Uh, the jatters begin to enter uh, these absolutely uh, 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 jart uh, institutions, uh, not even as in, let's say, uh, 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 platforms, right? Where they were earlier, they didn't have access to. And they begin asserting themselves. So uh, you see how, uh, and this is something I talk about in the book, you see how they collectively are able to, um, uh, they're collectively able to uh, uh, push uh, 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 issues that matter to them. They're able to uh, 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 veto uh, decisions that have been taken by the Jart landlord saying that you can afford this. I cannot because uh, uh, you may have a lot of land, so you can say, "Oh, you don't want a northeastern uh, tenant, or you don't want an African tenant." But I have just started out. I have so much loan. I can't say no to anyone who wants uh, 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 wants to rent. So those kinds of frictions you also begin to see uh, begins to take place within uh, these institutions. So these are. Uh, I would be. It would be entirely wrong to think that they are. They're only just uh, 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 jarts or landlords, or it's only them who can continue to to dominate. It's become far more uh, uh, complex than that. But uh, uh, I I also look at another uh, Dalit uh, community who are uh, the Valmikis, uh, and they are the lowest of the uh, of, of the of the uh, caste order. Uh, they mostly uh, they do municipal cleaning jobs in 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 uh, Delhi Municipal Corporation, uh, and I also show how uh, they are not able to. Uh, 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 manage the kind of uh, uh, property ownership that uh, the jatavs were. So there is also, when we say uh, Dalits, it's also not a homogenous character, the, uh, a homogenous category. The different categories were able to navigate this, maneuver this situation very, very differently. Right. So you also talk about urban villages and the two field sites that you have chosen. You do talk about them occasionally in the conversation so far. Munirka and Shapur Jat, you know, you use the term urban villages. So uh, do you think that, you know, these two sites also qualify them uh, to be urban villages? Yeah, absolutely. So that's the reason why I uh, looked at these places because uh, I wanted to look at pick two villages, uh, two which were slightly different from each other. Um, one, so which is why so I picked one which caters specifically to the urban, new middle-class labor, right? So this new precariat, what, we, what we're calling today, right? So uh, I wanted to look at that 
uh, a village which which caters to that and i wanted to see what kind of contradictions what kind of uh, uh, political economy questions really um, emerge out of uh, creating housing spaces for uh, uh, the urban this new urban labor and on the other hand i also wanted to look at uh, uh, a different kind of village so here i chose shapujat because it caters to a uh, a working class labor and and on the other hand also a very uh, niche uh, very up, upper class delhi uh uh, uh 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 clientele as well right where you're the people who run restaurants the people who run the fashion boutiques and so on and so forth so uh i and and having these two villages together i think uh allowed me to make uh make a sense of the bigger picture of what is possibly happening with uh, uh these new kinds of uh transitions post uh 1990s right uh, within the city so the interesting thing to 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 see here is that in the delhi master plan uh 1962 the big master plan that delhi uh, the government made um the two things that they forget right is uh, spaces for uh, working classes and b spaces for manufacture right so abdi indusharan uh, talks about uh, uh uh both these things right so how the fact that you don't have uh, spaces for working classes in a city like delhi automatically uh, pushes you to spot right so that is amenaroy's big argument around why india cannot plan its big cities and on the other hand the fact that uh, you only had these big manufacturing zones towards uh, okla and towards jahangirpuri uh, didn't mean that uh, uh, that's the only place for manufacturing that is feasible right so um, as a result what we see is that these urban villages on one hand are entirely forgotten uh, by the big uh, planning uh, 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 you know uh, 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 the planners of delhi right um, they're focusing on big institutions they're focusing on roads they're focusing on planned localities and dda colonies and so on and so forth these urban villages are entirely forgotten in the planning document and uh, nobody has a clue about what's going on in uh, uh, in these spaces until until quite recently right and until say uh, uh, mc mehta maybe or even little before that right so when uh, suddenly planners notice okay what have these spaces become uh, so what is it that these are all it's interesting to see that the the plan forgot these villages the plan forgot these workers the plan forgot uh, these uh, manufacturing spaces and it's these places and activities which are forgotten which are completely disregarded somehow they come together and they find their space in these urban villages in a, in a specific, in, in 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 different kinds of permutations and combinations across the city but uh, so all the contradictions that are created by the big capital and the big planning are eventually getting absorbed in these spaces right so at times when you know as an uh, uh, i i speak of this particular event that took place in the uh, in in one of my field sites um i won't go into much but it became quite a a, a big uh, uh, event and it became extremely uh, uh, it's a case of of rape in one of these villages and everybody went uh, up in arms and it was like how could this happen and uh, the immediate response of the villagers was like um it's you who dispossessed us it's you who uh, you know uh, have uh, 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 kept us out of uh, uh, you know your your glorious new cities uh, and you have forced upon your 20000 cultures in the name of cosmopolitanism on us uh, what do you expect right so this, so those kinds of very uh, emotionally charged uh responses you get to to that story right so what i intend to tell is not like a one sided story of course as in there are people people have made money people have uh, benefited out of the system but it's also uh, the reverse side of dispossession is also true so it's not it's it's far more complicated and i hope uh, all of that shows in 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 the book right uh so uh so 
how does the changing economic uh, realities coexist with the parallel attempt to hold on to kinship associations and traditional notions of respect and honor? Uh, you specifically look at the Jat community and what is their uh, relationship to the changing global interface that you look at in your book? If you could throw some light on that. So I think, uh, I think I've already been speaking uh, at some amount of how these notions of honor and respectability uh, crop up, especially, and it comes up more, uh, 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 let's say forcefully in these spaces, precisely because of uh, the sense of uh, being uh, uh, um, polluted and corrupted, right? So the city is not a force which is outside, the city is present within the village, right? So now that, so which is why I talk about uh, Majburi in, in, in the book quite a bit, where uh, everybody has uh, feels they've been forced to, you know, uh, to, to give in to this new rental economy where they have been forced to welcome uh, uh, or uh, 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 rent out property to uh, people who they would absolutely abhor, right? So the African tenants, the, uh, the tenants from Northeast, right? Um, and yet they, are, they, are, they, they have to uh, rent out to them precisely because that's the livelihood. So automatically it creates this sense of, um, a loss of sense of self, a loss of masculinity. So the entire discourse of honor and respectability is a very, very uh, patriarchal one. It's always a patriarchal one. It's more so patriarchal in this case uh, because of this anxiety of, uh, uh, of having been corrupted. And the automatic, automatic fallout of this is always on the women, right? So there is increasing surveillance on, on women who, of, of their own uh, community. Um, and of course, it translates into racial tensions with uh, the Africans and, uh, and the, there have been points of flare ups in, in, in these villages. Um, so yeah, so the point of talking about uh, this uh, Majburi is also on one hand, as in, so when, when I speak about this racial tension, um, on one hand, of course, they're racializing uh, someone who's from the Northeast, right? Uh, saying, oh, they are uh, the ones who are corrupting our culture because they drink, they do, they party, they do this, they do that. We are not like that, right? So that's the constant uh, 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 thing that you would hear in these villages. And, and they say, oh, uh, they, are, they are the people who are, who are corrupting us. So one side of it's also like how housing discrimination really happens, right? So housing discrimination, the way in which it happens in, in most cities, in fact, in fact, in Delhi as well, is by not renting out. That I don't rent out to Muslims. I don't rent out to single women. But here they're forced to rent out, but they have to, the racial tension then becomes a very different kind of attention. Um, so having uh, said this, um, um, so yeah, on one hand, they're, they're racializing the other person, but they're also racializing themselves. So they're also looking at themselves as, as jart men who were supposed to be, you know, very, very strong, who were supposed to be like this, you know, and that's how they're also a martial race. Right? So that's how they're, they've been uh, 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 demarcated in the, in the, in the colonial uh, uh, regime, uh, by the colonial, colonial regime. Uh, so they also see themselves as, uh, having degenerated racially. So, uh, and they say, oh, our, our, our children have gone corrupt. So they are not as strong as we used to be. I used to, when I was young, I could, uh, you know, uh, uh, eat 50, 15 rotis a day or, you know, two kilos of ghee every day. But my, my child, my son cannot even like digest like a hundred gram of ghee a day. So those kinds of racialized discords begin to take, uh, uh, take place. So there is, those anxieties are, are, are quite there in, 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 and it comes up in forms of, in dis discussions around honor, respect, uh, culture, uh, in all sorts of ways, right? So it's not, it's not, it's, it's not, it will not come to you in, in, in one form, but it's always, almost, always, always present. Right. 
So uh, last question, how do these urban va villages acquire value in the real estate market in a post liberalization Delhi? And if you also see connections between rent and then electoral politics. Uh, so rent and uh, electoral politics, uh, to me, as in it, it was a surprise to me because I didn't think uh, this was uh, such a clear uh, uh, link. But uh, the, the when I was doing my field work, I think that's what um, that's what researching. That's when you uh, asking. So mostly my research would my field work would entail. Uh, asking people about their past life. So that's how I would start. I would, I would ask them to talk about, okay, what was, what, how do you remember your village? What was it like? And then they would tell me, okay, what happened? What happened? When did they buy property? When did they buy a, a bus? When did they put in, invest money in say a construction business? So those kinds of stories sort of uh, came out through uh, a, a sense of remembrance, uh, 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 almost like a, 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 a going back to the memories. But I think something changes the moment you are researching an event. But as, because as things are happening, you see different kinds of uh, things uh, sort of connect up, which you hadn't quite seen before. So as I was researching the, uh, the, uh, the two Delhi elections actually happened uh, almost back to back. So this is the time when AAP, uh, the Amadmi party became, uh, 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 actually won the election. And then Arvind Kejival resigns, and then there's an again uh, 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 another election uh, quite uh, soon after. So I was able to uh, follow both these elections very, very closely, um, and that's what made this connection between rent and uh, 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 elections uh, very clear. So uh, what I'm trying to argue here is that. Um, Rent, like I'm saying, this is very, very different from capital, right? Uh, because rent depends on collectivity. It begin, it, it's more or less a group uh, identity. It's a group thing. It's a collective uh, thing to do together. As individuals, you don't matter, right? Unlike a capital uh, capitalist regime where uh, individuals matter more, right? So uh, the story of the, the rags to riches story, the Ambani stories are are important because you see them as as heroes right because that's what they have they've done uh, uh, how smart they were or how cunning they were or how how industrious they were how hard working they were that's the kind of story you we hear with capitalists right but the moment we come to uh, people who are not theirs uh, that story doesn't exist right because it's a story of a group it's a story of a collectivity and ultimately all of you, as in no matter who, how many flats you own or, or something, all of them are own a similar commodity, which is a flat, which is, or maybe a go down or something. So in a way it's very, they're very, this, the question of social distinction amongst them cannot possibly arise within the question of rent. So here it becomes absolutely important for say, especially the ones who are doing well economically, if they want to establish their social distinction in, in a specific way, the one very important avenue to do that is through elections by uh, getting elected as, uh, not necessarily as councillors, but if councillors are also fine, but if you are say, if you have more money and if you're more aspirational, then you would definitely aim for the uh, MLA ticket, right? So that's what I think, uh, when uh, elections were would be in, around the corner, you would see people getting very, very excited about uh, tickets. Who's getting the BJP ticket? Who's getting the Ahmadi party ticket? Who's, uh, who all are quoting which party? So, so to me, I think this is actually a story of, um, of course, how rent travels from uh, the accumulation that you make through rent, how that travels into electoral politics. but. I'm saying that it also happens for a particular reason because, um, and that reason is the need to uh, be uh, acknowledged as someone different, as someone with more respect, as someone with more authority in a, in a, in a particular place. So um, it's mostly that. Uh, and I also, so I follow these leaders who are, who are aspirational, who want tickets, who are quoting various parties. So I, I, I uh, follow them. And I also follow some of their party workers. 
And I think they were also a very, very fascinating uh, uh, bunch of people to just just uh, uh, watch and to to observe in terms of uh, how how they are uh, functioning. Because just like the leaders who are uh, looking for social distinctions, these are also men who are unemployed. Uh, and all they do is depend on, say, the, the rent that their fathers earn, not even them, right? Uh, and also looking for something to, uh, to regain their masculinity uh, from. So this election, and so they, what they do is they attach themselves to various leaders. And because they don't have the money themselves to fight elections. So their only hope is that if this leader wins elections, then my status in, 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 in my family immediately and my locality around would immediately go up. So then you see different people hedging their bets differently across uh, uh, around elections. And to me, that was that, that discovery was, was fascinating to just as like, okay, these dots are really connecting. I never thought that they would connect in, in actually such, such exciting ways. Right. So thank you so much for speaking to us. I think we have asked you enough and we'll leave the rest of the mystery to our listeners to go back and read the book. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much, Sushmita, for taking time out to do this. And hopefully it will be an engaging conversation for our listeners as well as it was for us. Thank you so much, Ritiparna and uh, Deepali. And uh, yeah, I uh, really enjoyed this conversation. I hope I didn't ramble too much, but thank you so much for the opportunity.